people are getting crushed right now on car payments. Can, can we uh, watch this one last video here about people's car payments at this car dealership? What are people paying for these for their cars? Maurice, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I have a 2016 Porsche Cayman and I don't have a payment. Good for him. Hey Lee, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I drive a 2004 PT Cruiser. My payment is $6.99 a month. Unreal. Hey Melvin, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I have a 2016 Tesla Model S and I'm paying right around six fifty. Hey Rainier, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? Uh, 1972 Cutlass Supreme, uh, $500 a month. Okay. Hey Lo, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? Uh, I drive a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and my car payment is a grand. Hey Bussy, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I drive a 1999 Toyota Corolla and my car payment is zero and I love it. Good for I you. I love that for you. <laughs> Hey Brad, what car do you drive and what are your car payments? Uh, well, I'm a car enthusiast. I drive several cars and I can't say what the payments are. But I have a. Uh, he's, a he's embarrassed. Because uh, it's probably more than what he can afford. 23 Defender V8. Oh, yeah, uh, and a uh, uh, 23 Audi uh, nice. Econ RS. Yeah. Love but that. I will not say what the payments are. <laughs> they're, all, they're all brand hey, new Ron, cars. What car do you there. drive and what's your car payment? I drive a Nissan Altima. My payment's eight. <laughs> <laughs> hey Michael, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I drive a Beamer and it's paid for. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Hey Patrick, what car do you drive and what's your car payment? I don't have one, I have a motorcycle. <laughs> so, all right, let me cut to the chase and we're short on time. How much should your car payment be? By the way, what's, what's comfortable for, what was comfortable for you when you're working for UFC? <laughs> Shit, anything under $400, man. Yeah, anything under 400 bucks. Yeah. So no more than 10 to 50% of yeah. your annual income should go to a car payment. So in other words, if you're making $30,000 a year, $40,000 a year, 10% of $30,000 is three grand. That's two fifty dollars a month. If you're making $50,000 a year, no more than $5,000 a year should go to your car payment. That's uh, it's what it's roughly you know, four, four C, you know, four CT6 a month. So keep your finances in check. Now, people say, well, man, I, you see the cars today? So here's what I'll tell you. I always buy my cars. Look, I bought a couple of Rolls Royces, Cadillac Escalades, you name it, Mercedes-Benz, BMWs. I always buy my cars five years old. More so, these guys are working for a dealership where they're working for somebody. Yeah. When you're an employee, you can't write off your car payment because you're not using it for business purposes. But if you have a side business, a side hustle, it doesn't necessarily need to be profitable, but if you have a side hustle, guess what you can engage that car for? Service into that business. And once you assign your personal vehicle for business use, guess what now? You unlock a whole nother level of tax codes and tax deductions to your personal income. So therefore, the four, five, six, eight hundred dollar a month car payment now could potentially be tax deductible. I believe for every mile that you drive here in 2024, uh, uh, 54, 55, 56 cents per mile, if it's used for business, can be written off your business in terms of uh, your business expenses and your uh, tax deduction. So um, you drive an SUV. Yeah. Is it over uh, 6,000 pounds? It is. Yeah, so it's section right uh, uh, yeah, section 179 says you can write off a uh, the part of the Trump tax act. You can write a portion of that up to, I think, believe up to $20,000, check with the tax person. You can write a large chunk of your purchase if it's over 6,000 pounds off on your tax on year one. Well, so why is the government trying to do this? You ever wonder why the government is trying to give you tax incentives as in business owner, even if it's a side hustle, for car ownership? Because it makes money flow. Right, so there's an incentive for you to buy a car. Guess what? The dealership's happy because you're buying a car. It's tax double to the business, but the business owner's happy because he sold the car off his lot. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this, guys. One of my cars was a, uh, a Sony GS3. I'm going to take a look at my screen. So uh, those are old today. So the new one's 350. The, the a Sony Lexus GS350. So I look for a car for about five, six years old. And here's what you get, 2018, 2018 uh, vehicles, uh, eight, um, 2018, 19, for 18 to 19 to $20,000 on average, okay? Still decent cars. Oh my gosh, man, 100,000 miles, 70,000 miles. Well, who makes the most reliable cars? Who makes the most reliable cars? Number one at the top is Lexus. Oh, shit. Lexus. Second is Toyota. Toyota, same company, right? And so most reliable cars, Japanese cars make some of the best cars out there, hunt, I was, listen, confessions of a G G-Fuel Loop hood technician. <laughs> when I popped up, open the hood, before I started my business in, uh, as an entrepreneur, I popped open the hood of a Toyota or a Honda, guess what, I saw a clean engine, nothing, I'm like, oh, this is brand new, bro, I looked in, 100,000 miles. I popped open the hood of a Suburban, I popped open the hood of an American-made car, GMC, man, how many miles you got in this thing? Boom, first oil change, because it's nasty, leaking all over the damn place. 
Toyota, most reliable cars out there. Now, don't take my word for it. You got to obviously do your inspections. But if you plug this in, okay, if you if you plug this in, um, how much can you afford in a car? So let's let's do a, a let's do a case study. How much can you afford? Here, your credit score. This is why your credit is important. Managing your credit is important. Let's say your credit score is between six sixty one and seven eighty. Your very good credit, not excellent. You know, care payments four sixty four. Is that manageable for a lot of people making forty fifty thousand dollars a year? So that, so if you don't want an eight hundred dollar car payment, guess what you got to do? You buy a five year old car payment. Put three thousand dollars down. Put it in between eighteen to twenty-two thousand dollars, and if four hundred sixty-four dollars a month is comfortable for you, guess what? You also do. You start a side business. So therefore, you can write the car payment, maintenance, the miles off on your taxes. Book recommendation for you: lower your taxes big time, and how your car payment can be one of the greatest tax deductible gold mines that you have in your financial arsenal as you fight inflation, as you fight high, uh, high higher cost of gas. This could be your this could be a weapon for you to help you understand a better financial decision as it relates to probably the second largest payment that you have in your current budget right now for most people, which is their student loans. Thoughts on this? Would you take the same approach when it comes on to refinancing or when would you suggest someone refinance their vehicle? Uh, refinance your vehicle if the interest rate is lower, but here's a problem too as well. Once you refinance it, also make sure you keep it in the same time frame of, of when you were uh, paying it. So in other words, if you have a four-year car payment and year three, you're refinancing it, if you refinance back to a four-year car payment and you're starting to clock all over again, even though the illusion is you have a lower car payment, but you're still paying more in interest. So I have a, I have a friend of mine who made like 30 grand off of a, off a deal, uh, maybe about two weeks ago. He's like, dude, I have either A, keep that money and reinvest it into my business or into some form of stock, or B, pay off my car note, which is exactly 29 grand left. And he will be left with $1,000 cash. Would you reinvest that money back into your business or would you just take that lump sum of money and just pay off your car note? It's not or, it's and. Yeah. Take half it, pay off the car payment, get ahead in your car payments, knock off a lot of interest that you otherwise would have paid during the term of the, of the car loan and take the other $14,500, invest that back into your business because that will help monetize your business, create another revenue stream. And then what happens is in the next three, four, five, six months as you spike your revenue, you pay off the rest of the car. But you need a capital, working capital for you. And by the way, let's say, People say, I need to be debt-free, I need to be debt-free, I need to be debt-free. Let's say if you, you have $100,000 of debt, but you have $100,000 of cash. Are you debt-free? Mm. Are you? I wonder. Why, what do you think? You have $100,000 of cash, $100,000 of debt, $100,000 of cash. Are you debt-free? What do you think? Milton, you're miles. Sweetheart, what do you think? No. You're not debt-free? Well, I'm glad uh, we're having a money smart moment right now because potentially... You could take this hundred thousand dollars cash and pay off the hundred thousand dollars of debt. In other words, debt doesn't control you. Of course, Dave Ramsey's not going to agree with this, but here's what this hundred thousand dollars can do for you if you don't pay off the debt. Here's what happens though: you take this hundred thousand dollars of cash to pay off this hundred thousand dollars of debt. Guess what? You don't have working for you anymore. You don't have money working for you anymore. It worked for everybody else. But if you give this hundred thousand dollars cash and you take some of the interest that you earn off this hundred thousand dollars and use that money to pay off debt or use that money to create more revenue streams for you because you have operation capital, this debt here can, whenever you decide to pay off, in my opinion, let me know if you think I'm wrong, but you're technically debt free because you're in control. At any given point, you can say, okay, I'm sick and tired of my debt, take $100,000 and pay off $100,000. Yeah, you have zero of operating capital, but guess what you have to as well? Zero debt. But here, this $100,000, at least it could be working for you even though you have $100,000 of debt, but you have control when to pay off this debt. Different way of, different way of uh, taking a look at your assets and liabilities, profits and losses. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What would you do in that situation? Would you pay off the debt or would you keep the cash? Let me know in the comment section below. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.